OSI model. So let's start with OSI model. So this OSI model is called Open System Interconnection, right? And it was developed or it was published by ISO in 1984 as a reference model so that different vendor devices or you can say different uh, attributes networks can communicate with each other, can be interoperable with each other. Like initially when computer systems were developed in 1980s, they were not able to, or you can say their network standards were not able to communicate or compatible with each other. Okay, like if there is a device developed by Apple or there is a device developed by IBM, their, their network standards were different. So the different vendor uh, network communication compatibility was very complex. So to, you can say to make it possible or to create communication, to create interoperability between different vendors for their network attributes, this OSI reference model was developed, okay? Now, in this OSI model, we have seven layers, okay? It uses a seven layer approach just to make us understand how the packet is being created, how the packet is being forwarded in the network, okay? What types of attributes it will carry or what types of transmission protocol will be used. So all these things or how the data will be presented, how the session will be created, all these things are, you can say, are defined in this in these seven layers of reference model, okay? That's why it is called reference model. Now in these seven layers, it will start with layer seven. We always start from layer seven, you can say, whenever you are going to send the data. So application layer is layer seven. And then we have, presentation layer, okay, then session layer, it is called layer 5, then transport layer, it is called layer 4, then we have network layer, it is called layer 3, then data link layer, it is called layer 2, and physical layer, it is called layer 1, okay. Now, if I talk about application layer, so this is the closest layer to the endpoint. Okay, whenever any endpoint will uh, try to initiate the traffic, will try to send the traffic to any other destination network. So he has to use that application layer. Okay, so this is the most closest layer to the endpoint. Okay, and here at application layer, we use some application layer protocols, which will be used to carry the application layer data. Let's say if you are going to use any web server, okay, then web server will send some type of web pages, right? That web pages will be carried by HTTP or HTTPS protocol. So it is an application layer protocol. If I talk about file transfer, then file data will be carried by some application layer protocol like FTP or you can say SCP, right? So these pro TFTP, these protocols can be used. Other than this, if you are sending any email, then emails will be carried by SMTP protocol, right? So these are all application layer protocols which will be used to carry application layer data. So application layer will be, you can say, at this layer, both the end user and the application layer interacts directly, okay, with software application. That's why it is called application layer. So this layer will be responsible to define services which uh, will be used to carry the data. It depends on your traffic. So application layer is the closest layer, you can say. Here we use many protocols like HTTP S or HTTP, SMTP, okay? And uh, you can say DNS, FTP, etc. Many other protocols are there which can be used, okay? Then we have presentation layer, right? In presentation layer, data formats or it will data format will be defined, or you can say presentation layer is responsible to translate data for the application layer based on its syntax. Okay, based on its application, uh, you can say application code representing right representation. So here, data encoding, decoding, decryption, encryption, compression, and decompression of the data will be performed according to application layer attributes, okay? 
like if any email is coming so it's email so whenever any, any email will be exchanged or email will be sent it will be a different type of application layer attributes it will be having a different type of application layer attributes if i talk about for web services web traffic it will be having some different type of attributes right so at presentation layer it will be defined that how the data is being represented in the network or how the data is being transmitted in which format it is being transmitted okay it is called presentation layer so it is used or you can say here i can explain you i can write all these one by one okay just not in short form so you can say for application layer is the closest layer to the endpoint endpoint uses application softwares to generate the traffic to handle the traffic you can say right this event forward and application layer protocols like applications can be uh, for web traffic it can be a browser right for mail traffic you can use mail client so an application layer protocol will be used to carry the application data like for web server you have to use http or https for telnet server you have to use telnet protocol and uh, for mail you have to use smtp for files you have to use ftp tftp sftp scp these protocols okay so we use many applications also other than this we have presentation layer presentation layer it is responsible for the format and for formatting the data you can see so format will be defined how the data is being sent and translates data for the application layer and translates the data for application layer okay like encoding and decoding at this layer encryption decryption compression and decompression it also depends on applica application okay will be performed okay so the representation of the data will be defined by presentation layer okay after this we have session layer it is layer 6 sorry layer 5 no not layer 6 layer 6 is presentation layer layer 5 is session layer session layer is responsible or session layer controls conversation between different endpoints okay communication it is layer 5 in osi model so it will be responsible to take care about the take care for initiation of connection or termination of a connection okay so a session or connection between machines is set up and managed and terminated by this session layer only okay and if i talk about any client who is authenticating so authentication process is also the part of session layer session layer will perform authentication if the authentication is successful then connection will be established right there are many services where authentication is required so if authentication is successful then the client or endpoint will get the access okay if the authentication is not successful then its session or its connection will be terminated clear so if i talk about session layer it controls communication between different computers a session or connection between endpoints is set up managed 
and terminated by session layer. It is also responsible for authentication and reconnections. Okay. This is the work of session layer. And transmission protocol for session layer data. It will come or will be generated by the application or will come from a layer. It will be handled by transport layer also because transport layer is responsible to define transmission, trans data delivery, and error checking of data packets. Okay, it will also manage error checking. It will also define access segment size, which can be transmitted, which can be sent. Here, segmentation will be performed. Basically, let's say if your application is generating a high amount of data. Let's say you are going to exchange a file, then that file will not be sent at once, or you are downloading a video. That video file will not be downloaded at once, right? It will come in the form of packets. So before, when you can say before creating the packet, your PC or your endpoints will create the segments, and segmentation will be performed at transport layer. Okay, according to maximum segment size, we will see that. But for now, transport layer is uh, responsible to define transmission protocol for the data received from application layer, and it will perform segmentation according to MSS. It is also responsible to provide many other features. Okay, basically here we use two protocols like uh, TCP or UDP. It depends on your application layer protocol, which transmission protocol will be used. Either you can use TCP or UDP. There are some protocols which can use TCP and UDP both according to their connection type. Okay, so I will tell you about them as well. But for transport layer, you can say that transport layer is. We will discuss about TCP UDP separately. Okay, responsible to define transmission protocols for application layer perfect or application layer data okay it manages data delivery okay and uh, error connects or oh, sorry error checking You can say segmentation, etc. Sequencing the packets. Okay, when it comes to TCP transmission or TCP transactions, then packets will be sent in the sequence using sequence number. Okay, so that on the destination endpoint they can be reassembled because TCP provides reassembly as well. Okay, so at this layer. We use two transmission protocols. Based on these transmission protocols, your transport layer responsibilities will be defined, right? First one is TCP and UDP. TCP is called transmission. Control protocol UDP is called user datagram protocol. Okay, TCP and UDP. Now, if I talk about TCP specifically for TCP, so TCP will be used at transport layer. When any application will generate the data for the protocol, which requires reliability, which requires retransmission, which requires a connection oriented data transmission, which requires, you can say, flow control, which requires segmentation, then we use TCP. Okay. Then we use TCP. But if you are sending the traffic for such a protocol, which does not require all these features, 
then we can use UDP for that. Like specifically, if I talk about UDP, we use it for voice traffic, okay? And uh, we use it for uh, broadcasting in telecom sector also, okay? So that uh, there is no reliability for the packets. There is no connection orientation behavior, okay? I will tell you about that also. And there is no retransmission of the data when, when it is being sent using UDP. And UDP will be used to send very small and discrete packets, okay? Like for, for the voice traffic, if you see the packets for NTP, NTP also uses UDP. For such protocols, if you see the packet size, it will be very small, less than 10 bytes, okay? So we don't use TCP to transmit that much of a small data because TCP is not that much faster, right? UDP is faster than TCP because it can forward the data as soon as, or you can say it, it, it will not wait for any kind of segment because when you are using TCP, TCP minimum segment will be 64 byte, right? And maximum segment size is 1460 byte by default. Okay, based on MTU, it can be changed, but by default, it will be 1460 bytes on Cisco routers, okay? So TCP and UDP, they are totally different. And based on your application layer protocol, transport layer will decide whether it needs to use TCP or UDP, okay? So if any protocol requires TCP, then which features TCP can provide for that particular application layer protocol, right? Let's say if we are using HTTP, HTTPS, FTP, Telnet, SSH, okay? Then these protocols will use, all, all, all protocols will use TCP, okay? They need reliable connection, okay? So TCP is a connection-oriented protocol, first of all. It performs three-way handshake between communicating endpoint. Before sending, application layer data. Okay, if three-way handshake successfully established, then data will be forwarded, right? Otherwise, it will not be sent. I will explain three-way handshake also, okay, and how it will be performed. So the purpose of three-way handshake is just to maintain, it's just to create an initial contact between the endpoints who are communicating, who are participating in that communication, right? And after that, if the three-way handshake is complete and the point will be able to see that perfectly otherwise uh, they will not be able to exchange the data let's say there is an endpoint it is connected in the network however with a router and this router is connected with isp let me take more space okay this is a router one here it is connected with isp however okay and uh, here we have a public server it is a web server so when this endpoint will go to access this web server then it requires a reliable communication, right? So before sending the web traffic, it will perform three-way handshake. Just to make an initial contact between this client and this web server, okay? Here in this three-way handshake, some TCP packets will be exchanged as initial bits, okay? So initiator will send TCP synchronization message. TCP synchronization message. If I talk about the purpose, I told you that this three-way handshake will be used to create an initial contact between the communicating endpoints. Other than this, this three-way handshake will also negotiate window size, okay, for these endpoints and MSS, maximum segment size. Maximum segment size is the amount of data which can be transmitted at one time using this TCP connection, right? So before exchanging or before sending the actual data, this TCP three-way handshake needs to be established. 
So this TCP three-way handshake will be used to create an initial contact between the endpoints to negotiate window size and MSS. Okay. Clear. Now this initiator will send. Yes. I have a question. Like when you say window size and MSS, so basically uh, window size is the like uh, the highest amount of data that I can send in one time, right? So what is the difference between MSS and window size? Yes, yes. See, when you are using window size, window size is the highest amount of data which can be sent without receiving an acknowledgement. Okay. okay, without receiving an acknowledgement. But MSS is the maximum segment size which can be sent at one time. Okay. Okay. Like MSS will be 1460 byte by default, but window size can be 8192 bytes. Okay. Okay. Right. So if window size is 8192 bytes, it means initiator is saying that after sending 8192 bytes, or you can say after receiving 8192 bytes, you need to send me an acknowledgement. Okay. Let's say this uh, this client is giving window size 8192 bytes. So when it will send 8192 bytes to the server, server will give an acknowledgement. This is window size. Okay. Okay. And the maximum segment size is the segment size, which will be transmitted at one time. It is not for acknowledgement. Acknowledgement will come according to the window size. Okay. 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 So this is TCP SYN packet, synchronization packet. So TCP synchronization packet will be used to initiate TCP connection. After that, in this TCP synchronization packet, initial sequence number will be added, source port, destination port number will be added, okay? Then here, a pro, you can say, uh, what is it, it is called, urgent pointer, TCP flags, these flags like TCP SYN flag, Okay, then acknowledgement flag is there, urgent flag is there, push, reset, fin, these flags are there. Okay, then window size will be added. MSS will be sent in options field. I will show you TCP uh, negotiation or this three way handshake using Wireshark. Okay, so TCP synchronization message will be used to initiate the connection. If server is uh, satisfied, you can say it is listening on that particular port, then it will send TCP SYN X. If the IP address and port number is correct, okay, then server will server will send TCP SYN X. Now this is the synchronization message of this server, and this is the acknowledgement for received SYN packet. That's why it is called a SYN X. Okay, means server is sending its own synchronization message. It will send window size, MSS, and its source port number for this web service and the destination port number. Everything will be added. Okay. And if uh, it is a SYN X, then two flags will be the next right? And then this packet will be sent to client. At the end, the client will send TCP acknowledgement. Lower window size and MSS will be negotiated, okay, will be used. At the end, it will be able to send HTTP GET request or whatever request it is trying to send with application data. Then application data will be exchanged. It is like this. If, they, if this three-way handshake is not successfully established, now in which condition it cannot be successfully established? In one condition it is filtered, right? Otherwise, if the server is not listening on this service, then port will be unreachable, okay? Otherwise, this client is not allowed to access this server, then the server can send a reset also, okay? It depends on the scenario. But for now, if I talk about a normal three-way handshake just to establish a session, these, these packets will be exchanged. I will show you using Wireshark, okay? Clear, so if three-way handshake is successfully established, then data will be forwarded, otherwise it will not be sent. TCP provides reliability. Okay, means all the packets will be acknowledged. The connection is reliable. Okay, it means whatever data or whatever bytes you are sending to the destination, destination is acknowledging them that he has successfully received them, right? So TCP provides reliability, the transmission. 
retransmission will be performed when some of the bytes are dropped in the transit or lost in the transit okay so tcp can provide or can perform retransmission for the lost bytes okay now what will be the difference between acknowledgement and selective acknowledgement can anyone tell me how retransmission works in tcp Yeah, that is that is fine. Sin ek ek, right? Sin sin ek ek. That is three way handshake, right? But how this retransmission will be performed? How it will be performed with ek or how it will be performed with sec selective acknowledgement? I will tell you about this also. Okay. So retransmission is something when your data bytes are lost in the transit, then initiator or you can say the sender needs to retransmit them. Whoever is the sender. Okay, now for retransmission, first of all, here we are using acknowledgement, right? Like uh, if you are sending 8192 bytes, then sender will give you an acknowledgement that I have received them, right? It means the connection is reliable and you don't need to perform any retransmission because you, you have received the acknowledgement, okay? Now, this is traditional acknowledgement. Let's say if the if the receiver is not able to get all the bytes which was sent by the sender receiver is not able to get all the bytes okay some of the bytes are lost in the transit okay some of the bytes are lost in the transit now when receiver let's say here let me connect two pcs then it will be more relatable okay this is pc1 let's say it is sending 8192 bytes normally the bytes are received it will send acknowledgement there is no need of retransmission, right? Now, for example, some of the bytes are received. Now, this client, it is said that you need to send me an acknowledgement when these bytes are received. But if the bytes are lost, let's say if uh, the client has received 0 to 4,000 bytes, okay, these bytes are received and 40962, 8192, these bytes are received. 96, or you can say 90 five bytes these bytes are lost in the transit for because of connection interruption you can say for any reason these bytes are lost but this client will not send the acknowledgement because it has not received the full 8192 bytes right so it will not be able to send the acknowledgement okay and the sender has to retransmit all the bits because this time this client is not able to classify that i have received these much of bits or not Okay, it will understand like this because it, it has received the random bits, right? Whatever the data was being transmitted, it has uh, received some random bits, but some of the bits are dropped in the transit. So this client will not be able to send the acknowledgement. This time when initiator or when the sender will not receive the acknowledgement for the sent bytes, it has to send retrans, I means it has to send the data again. It has to perform retransmission, right? It has to perform retransmission for the old data. But if you are using selective acknowledgement, this is for ACK, right? If you are using selective acknowledgement, it is, you see, it depends on your application, whether SAC is uh, enabled or not, okay? It is programmed with the application itself, okay? It is uh, a behavior of application you can see. If you are using acknowledgement, then the full data will be retrans retransmitted. If you are using SAC selective acknowledgement, now, if the sender is sending 8192 bytes, these bytes are received and these bytes are received. These mediator, or you can say these bytes are not received, these bytes are dropped. Then what can what the client can do? It can give the selective acknowledgement that I have received these bytes. Okay. In the acknowledgement, it will say that I have received these bytes. So the sender will automatically understand that okay, these are the dropped bytes. So it will retransmit only the dropped bytes. Okay, not the whole data again. This is called selective acknowledgement. Okay. Clear. Yeah. So it is used to make retransmission efficient. Otherwise, if you are sending the data and some of the bytes are dropped in the transit, the sender has to retransmit all the data again. Okay. It is like this. Let's say I am, uh, you can say I am speaking a paragraph and other students are noting down the paragraph. 
some of the students uh, has missed two lines from the paragraph. So what I need to do, I need to uh, speak the whole paragraph again, or I need to tell them only those two lines, right? If I am telling them only those two lines, it means uh, they have told me that what lines they have noted down, right? It is like selective acknowledgement. Otherwise, if you are using acknowledgement, then I have to speak the whole paragraph again. Are you getting this? This is retransmission. So TCP provides reliability, retransmission, and flow control. How TCP provides flow control? Uh, I have one question. Uh, yes. Yeah. So when the packet is received, but the uh, uh, the acknowledgement, uh, it get lost. So what what to, uh, could be the reason? I mean, what we can it gets implemented then. It means the data is received, but acknowledgement is dropped. Yes. Okay. See here, multiple acknowledgements will be sent. If all the acknowledgements are dropped, then data will be retransmitted because sender requires an acknowledgement after sending those much of bytes which are included in window size. Okay. Right. That's why we are using that component here so that we can decide an amount of data after which we require an acknowledgement for reliability purpose. Right. These things are inter connecting you can say if you are if you require reliability then you you will get the acknowledgement of data just to make sure their connection is reliable okay so how this flow control works in tcp um, upon the window size like the... yes yes you, you can say that when client is not able to process the data, right? It will not be able to send the acknowledgement, right? Then what client will do? Client will ask server just to reduce the window size. Okay. So that it can process less amount of data at one time and it needs to send the acknowledgement as well. So flow control will be used or will be provided by window size itself. Okay. And uh, here, if the client is not able to process the data which is sent by the server for any reason, maybe its CPU is very high or other services are utilizing its memory and uh, its components, then it, it will reduce, it will ask the server to reduce window size. Okay. It is called congestion window reduce. Other than this, TCP can provide you sequencing. and the assembly. Because I told you that file size can be big, right? But uh, your ethernet card or network interface card, they will not send that much of data at one time. So here we need to perform segmentation at transport layer. And for those segments, here sequence number will be defined so that they can be reassembled, okay? So sequencing will be used to define the sequence number so that on the destination endpoint or receiving endpoint, that particular data can be reassembled. Okay. So sequence number and acknowledgement number, and I will make you understand. Okay. Uh, in the Wireshark packet capture, you will see it is like a sequence number and acknowledgement number. Both will be, it will be zero for the first packet. Let's say it is one, right? This is for TCP SIN. And then this is for SYN packet. When reply packet will come, it will add its own sequence number. For example, three, the responder. This is initiator and this is responder. When it will send the reply traffic, it will send its own sequence number. And acknowledgement number will be, what will be the acknowledgement number? Sequence number plus one, two. Sorry, sequence number will be the acknowledgement number here. That I have received these bytes. Okay, next packet will be acknowledgement number plus one, sequence number two, and acknowledgement number will be three here. Okay, it is like this. So I will show you this thing using Wireshark also. Okay. Next sequence number will be the acknowledgement number plus one. You can say this thing to understand it in mathematical method. Okay. 
next sequence number will be acknowledgement number plus one i will show you in the wire chart okay so these are the characteristics other than this tcp will also provide you that thing error check-in right here i have included that i think it will also provide you error check -in. like there is a check some value see when you have some urgent data to be sent it is uh, different from error checking just to tell you when you have some urgent data to be sent like right uh, uh, you will need you will need that urgent pointer field also in tcp header when the data is urgent some of the bits are urgent they can be included in urgent pointer field and if the urgent pointer field data uh, sorry if the urgent pointer field has some value like some amount of bytes are there then urgent flag will be used there are different flags right we have sin flag acknowledgement flag pin reset okay and we have urgent and push okay so these flags can be used sin flag will be used to initiate the connection acknowledgement will be used to you can say send the acknowledgement for the received bytes fin flag will be used to finish okay finish the tcp connection or tcp session reset flag will be used to terminate the session okay reset is different finish is different okay when you are terminating the connection means uh, when you are not providing the connection you don't want to give the connection then you can reset that you can terminate that okay other than this we have urgent flag reset flag will be used when the server is not listening on that particular protocol particular service okay urgent flag will be used when some of the data is urgent and you don't want to put that data in buffer while it is being sent okay push flag push flag will be used when the data is being received you don't want to put it in buffer you want to push it to the cpu as soon as it is received like telnet uses push flag okay telnet protocol uses push flag because in the cli when you run the command those commands should be reflected on the console screen as soon as possible right so we cannot buffer telnet packets if the cpu is not available at the same time we cannot buffer we will push it okay if urgent flag is on there must be some value in urgent pointer field okay i will show you tcp header separately at that time i will explain all the fields all the flags as well okay clear so tcp provides reliability retransmission flow control sequencing reassembly etc okay now if i talk about udp protocol udp is a connectionless protocol udp is a connection less protocol it does not provide reliability any features all the features whatever provided by tcp retransmission flow control etc okay it is faster than tcp so it is used for voice traffic and to send the traffic for the protocols who generates very small packets okay like dns also 
okay dscp ntp syslog they all use this udp for their communication okay what can be the maximum size for dnx packet a normal packet or you can say through a firewall what size of dns packet is normally allowed because dns packets can be tempered Five and two bytes maximum size. Okay. okay. Uh, do you guys know about ping? Ping. Ping. Ping is used to verify the connectivity between two endpoints connected in the network. Right. If they are reachable, then you can verify using ping activity. Ping command. Which protocol ping uses? Ping uses ICMP. Right. We are going to discuss layer three, and then we will discuss about the spin utility also. So for now, UDP, it is it does not provide all these features which were provided in TCP. Okay, it is faster than TCP, so it is used for voice traffic. Like there is a protocol SIP session initiation protocol. It is used in voice communication. Okay, VoIP voice over IP. So it also uses UDP. Okay, so here you can take the example of these protocols like for TCP, HTTP is there, HTTPS, Telnet, SSH, then FTP, BGP, and many other protocols are there. Okay. Other than this, here in UDP, we have DSCP, DNS, NTP, Syslog, SNMP. Here you can add SMTP, okay, simple mail transfer protocol. It also uses TCP, okay. And here you can add ISACAM, it is also. UDP based protocol, many other protocols. GDOI is also UDP based pro protocol. Okay, same. So many protocols are available which can use TCP and UDP in the network based on their characteristics. Okay, it depends on the protocol that uh, which uh, transmission protocol will be used at transport layer. Okay, UDP is also used in broadcasting. Okay, here you can add this one. UDP is used for broadcasting. Okay. Because it is it provides faster communication and for voice traffic, video traffic, we need faster communication. Okay. Clear. So we, this is TCP and UDP. We will discuss headers separately. Okay. We'll discuss headers separately. Now, if I talk about next layer, it is network layer. We were discussing about transport layer, right? It was in transport layer. Now let's discuss about network layer. See, in TCP, I told you about MSS, right? So always remember that MSS is the maximum segment size which can be transmitted out of network interface card, okay? Out of NIC, how it is calculated, how you will calculate MSS. MSS is equal to MTU minus IP header minus TCP header, okay? This is 20 bytes normally. This is 20 bytes normally. And MTU is 1400. Sorry, MTU is 1500. MTU is 1500. Okay. So 1500 minus 40 will be. 
bytes. This is default MSS. Now let's discuss about network layer. Network layer is responsible for logical addressing, right? It is responsible to receive frames from data link layer and delivering them to their intended destination based on addresses contained inside the frames. Like uh, there will be an IP header added to your existing segment when it comes to network layer and uh, for logical identification ip addresses will be used right in those in this in this ip header source ip destination ip time to live value ip protocol number these things will be added so that we can also identify upper layer protocols right let's say from your application layer data is generated let's say it is a web page for http protocol so at application layer, which header will be added? Application layer header, right? This is web page. Then it comes to transport layer. Then one header will be added at transport layer TCP. Now this was your payload. To transport layer, it will be the segment. Okay, it, it is it's segments. After this, here we have this is called packet. With TCP header, it is called segment. With the application layer header, it is called just payload, which needs to be transmitted. Application, you can also call it application layer data. Okay. Now at network layer, so here you can write it like this. Network layer is responsible for receiving frames and delivering them to intended destinations, right? Intended destinations. Based on addresses based on logical addresses called IP address packet. Logical or you can say IP addresses are used to uniquely identify any endpoint in the network. Okay, so at this layer, I was telling you that at this layer, routing will be performed to find out best path to reach a destination network to reach a destination network okay and to find out backup path also loop free backup path clear so here ip addresses will be used or you can say ip header will be added okay so whenever you are going to create communication between two different network devices, then you have to perform routing and uh, routing that uh, it's routing works at network layer. Okay. After this, we have data link layer. See at network layer, we will discuss about IP addresses. Okay. In which I will tell you about IPv4 addresses and uh, subnetting also and IPv6 addresses. But this is the role of network layer. In IP header, TTL value will be added time to live value. Okay, if I am trying to ping a Windows PC, what will be the TTL value? Can anyone tell me? When when we are going to ping any Windows PC, what will be the TTL value? Anyone is aware about this thing? 128. Okay, and when we are going to ping with Linux? Linux. Or when we are going to ping any Cisco device? Well, 255. Yes, yes. For Linux, it is 64. 64, yes. So, yeah. so, yeah. so, I, I, so what I, this TTL defines? No problem. 
uh, it is every L3 device which it is passing, like a hop. You can say hops, right? But mm -hmm. in terms of operating system, in terms of operating system, it it is considered differently. Okay. Mm -hmm. For different, see when TCP/IP stack was being 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 used in these different vendor devices, then mm -hmm. they were you can say they were just a, a slightly different. It was a slightly different from other vendors. That's why they were changing some of the attributes. Like if I talk about IP header. It will remain okay. same either you are using Linux or either you are using Windows, right? But to make the difference of different vendors, they use or they customized TCP IP stack. That's why this TTL value is different for Linux and different for Windows. Okay. This is the thing. This is for just for their TCP IP stack implementation. Means when you are going to use TCP IP is open standard, anyone can implement it, right? In their network cards. So TCP IP will be implemented differently in different vendors. This is the thing. So that they can make like Android, right? Android is a, is a you can say, is a open standard, you can say. But when you use Google Nexus, then it will show you the actual Android. But if you use any other mobile vendor like Lenovo or any other like OnePlus, right? So in these also you will find Android, but it will be different from Google Nexus because Android belongs to Google. So it is proprietary to Google. When Google give you the Android, that will be the actual Android. Are you getting this? And when you are using Android in OnePlus, it will be a different GUI. It will be a different feature set over the screen, right? Are you getting yep. this? Yep. Android is also an operating system and it is used in different vendor different vendor mobiles, right? So mm -hmm. the representation of different vendor is different, you can say, for the Android operating system. But the actual Android operating system is different. So here also TCP IP is just an open system TCP IP stack just to create network standards. It will be used mm -hmm. differently on different vendor devices. Yeah. So just to, to make the difference, the TTL value is different between Linux and Windows, you can say, just to, to, to make the IP header different between these uh -huh. different operating systems. Now, at network layer, TTL will be used to define the hop count. But if you take as, as the perspective of operating system, then it doesn't need to, you can say, define it as a hop count. It is, it is defined that for Windows, it is 128. For Linux, it is 64. For Cisco devices, it is 255, right? Uh -huh. It is defined. But if I talk about the use of hop count in networks, then it is sorry use of TTL value or time to live value in the network, then it defines the hop count, how many hop count your packet can go away. But in terms of operating system, it is defined for the operating system. It is not like that if I am say, let's say if I am connecting two Windows PCs directly, so it's uh, TTL will be 120, uh, 128, right? So they are not going 120 hop away every time, right? It is right. defined for Windows, but when it comes to the network, let's say in EIGRP packet, if the TTL value is one only, then it mm -hmm. means the packet can travel only one hop away, not more than that. This is the thing. That's that's the different I want to, difference I want to tell you. Okay. Okay. Here we are using TTL value to define hop count in IP header. Okay. Clear. So for every packet which includes IP header, a TTL value will be defined. Okay. Like we will use EIGRP a layer three protocol, OSPF a layer three protocol. For them, TTL will be used. Okay. When you will use BGP protocol, then also TTL will be used. And at that time, it will tell you that how many hops this packet can be for, hops away this packet can be forwarded. Now let's move to data link layer. Now data link layer is, uh, you can say at data link layer, directly connected nodes are used to perform node to node data transfer, right? Where data will be packaged into frames. Uh, at data link layer, you can write it like this. Directly connected nodes. Means nodes connected in same network, right? Can transfer data node to node or you can say it maintains node to node data delivery okay where data is packaged into frame 
packaged into frame. It is also responsible for error correction. Okay, the data link layer also corrects error that may have occurred at physical layer. Okay, now this data link layer is layer two. Okay, so this layer will encompasses two sub layers. Like here, we have two sub layers of data link layer: MAC layer and LLC layer. Okay, MAC layer is called media access control layer, and LLC layer is called logical link control layer. Okay, it has two sub layers. Then I will tell you about the uses. MAC layer and LLC. It is called media access control. LLC is called logical link control. Okay, logical link control. Now, MAC layer provides flow control and multiplexing of data transmissions over a network. Okay. It provides for data transmission, okay, for device transmission, you can say multiplexing for device because one device can communicate with multiple devices at the same time, right? So, here, MAC addresses will be used to identify different sessions at data link layer okay or you can say at data link layer traffic will be forwarded based on mac addresses okay and mac addresses are the physical addresses of endpoints of the nodes which will be used to identify them physically okay now in real time also whenever you want to send a letter nowadays we don't send a letter but in ancient time when we sent the letters we required the name of the person to whom we are sending the letters, right? And we require his address also. Here also, when you are going to send, and we require a carrier, you can say a mediator who can send your letter to the destination person, right? So here also, we are using the same methodology, okay? We are creating a packet. We are using some kind of carrier protocol to send that packet. And in that packet, you need to put the information about the sender and the receiver also so there are a lot of attributes which will be added in the packet but at that at the data link layer we use mac addresses so that we can identify all the nodes physically mac address cannot be changed it is hard coded by the manufacturer okay i will tell you about the mac address also how you can identify the device vendor or oui organizational unit identifier of any endpoint of any machine okay just to track its vendor or it's uh, many things can be tracked its operating system its information about the applications and feature set many things okay llc logical link control it provides error control for the over the physical medium and uh, as well as identify if the line protocol is up or not okay llc logical link control so it provides error control over physical medium and identifies line protocol of the interface if interface is working fine physically then line protocol will be up okay if if you have enabled the interface logically by running no shutdown command then line protocol will be up if the inter interface is not physically good if there is any problem in the physical you can say physical physical properties of interface it is not working properly then it will its line protocol will be down even if interface status is up okay after data link clear your cpu will use you can say 
physical layer will be used, right? Physical layer. Okay, physical layer, it is the lowest layer of OSI model. Okay, and it is more concerned with the electrically or optically transmitting raw unstructured data over the physical network across the across the wires you can say over the network across across the wires okay so physical layer of you can say from the physical layer we need to send the data using wires okay so it can include specifications such as voltage pin layout cabling okay radio frequencies at the physical layer uh, we can consider network interface card, network adapters, cables, hub, hub was also a physical layer device, right? So whatever things you can, you can say whatever network components you can touch, they works, they are working at physical layer like cables, Ethernet cables or network interface card, okay? These are your physical layer components like voltage as well and pin layout cabling like you are going to use a straight cable or cross cable. It is also identified at physical layer but nowadays we have auto mdx features on port so we don't need to care about that we will discuss about it in cabling okay so you can say physical layer it is the lowest layer in osi model Okay. It is responsible for data transmission or transmitting electrically or optically. Okay. For transmitting we can write it like this transmitting unstructured data electrically in in the form of electric signals right electrically or optically in the form of light okay across the network okay across the network so it will send data bits it will send data bits across the network from physical layer Okay, physical layer to the receiving or you can say to the sending device to the receiving side physical layer, right? You can understand it like this that you it will send the data from its physical layer to other end physical layer, right? It includes or it can include it can include voltages pin layout cables connectors hub was also the physical layer device but we don't use it nowadays okay layer. so this is physical layer so the components which can be touched okay we will discuss headers separately like tcp header udp header ip header okay other than this icmp header arp header and uh, tcp header udp header all these headers also then in further when we will move to security there are a lot of headers right we will see them later 